Greet you all in the highly exalted, wonderful, precious name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Welcome to the whole Bible tour in three years. Turning our Bibles to Psalm 90. And the Psalm is uh, the prayer of Moses. And uh, in verse 1, he says, uh, Lord, you have been our dwelling place throughout all generations. Before the mountains were born or brought forth the whole world from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. Now, this is very crucial that Moses was recognizing that God is their eternal dwelling place. He is their eternal dwelling place. Now, having a uh, on and off relationship with the Lord, having a relationship that is very temporary is very different from what Moses is talking about here. Moses is talking about the Lord as their dwelling place. This really shows a right kind of life uh, in the sight of the Lord because most times in this wicked world, in this commercial Christendom, we see people just want Want to have connection with the Lord as much as is required to be able to meet their needs, to be able to just do with what they require. But they don't want the Lord. They only want what the Lord gives. Whereas Moses was very clear in his prayer. He says, uh, Lord, you have been our dwelling place. Or in other words, he recognized that it was not the uh, place of Canaan that they were going, that they were looking forward uh, for their actual promise, but it was the Lord himself. The Lord was their dwelling place from generations to generations. And this is the best kind of life that we stay in the Lord. And then uh, uh, he says, before the mountains uh, were born and before the whole world was born, in verse 2, you are God from everlasting to everlasting. Now he's recognizing who God is. Now, the reason Moses was able to go to Pharaoh was because he recognized who God was. He definitely recognized that God told him, I am who I am. And he understood it to a uh, to a very good extent. And that's why he recognized that God was sovereign, self-existent, and he did not need anybody. Now, this is a very great understanding, especially in days of self-righteousness, in days when religion is taking on the toll on people to uh, puff them up into thinking that they are, uh, they are great and they're good. Uh, you know, Moses had this beautiful understanding where he recognized God as sovereign independent of himself and then in verse uh, um, 3 onwards he says but you turn back uh, people to dust uh, and you say uh, return to dust you mortals and uh, uh, they, they just die now Moses is very practical just because he was right with God he did not uh, believe the lie that uh, the serpent had told Eve that you shall not die he recognized that his life was definitely going to end. Though Moses lived for many years, Moses recognized that life was futile. And this is always, this is always the recognition of somebody who really walks with the Lord. If we don't walk with the Lord, then we might have this kind of uh, uh, false opinion, this kind of mirage that we will live a very long life and we will live and we will not think about our death. But when we are walking with the Lord, then death is something that those who walk with the Lord will definitely think about. They think about it with anticipation to work while they are alive. They think about it with preparation because they have to give an account. They think about it with hope because they know that they have an eternal reward. What a glorious way a man can see his end and live in reality when he's really connected with the Lord. Those who are not connected with the Lord, you know, um, they, they are careless about the day uh, of death because they are not really very accountable. They don't live their lives uh, uh, in, a, in a way where they, are in good, where they are good stewards of all that they have. And uh, they don't have an expectancy of a reward in eternity. Whereas Moses was very clear about it. And then he goes on to say uh, in verse 5, you know, you sweep them away and they are gone. And uh, in the in the morning, they are like uh, grass um, that uh, springs up in the morning and by evening, it's dry and withered. So he, uh, you know, Moses had gone through one of the best kinds of life anybody of his time could ever go. He had, he had been into the palace of Pharaoh. He had been trained in all the education of Egypt. But with all of this, he recognized that life was futile without the Lord. And that's why he begins that the Lord is his refuge. The Lord is his dwelling place from eternity. 
eternity to eternity. And then in verse 7 onwards, he starts to pray, Lord, we are being consumed by your anger and terrified by your indignation. And uh, you have set our iniquities before us, our secret sins in the life, light of your presence. Now, when somebody walks with the Lord, then one, one sure sign is they will start to see their sin very clearly. They will start to see their sin as utterly sinful. They will start to see their sin as something abominable. They don't want to cover it, but they want to get rid of it. Now, this is a very, very beautiful consequence of walking with the Lord. Because when we walk with the Lord, you get to see sin as sin. Because otherwise, you do not have the right light to be able to see sin as sin. So this is very, very crucial in the life of a believer that as he walks with the Lord, he gets to to know that God is sovereign. He gets to know that God is not just uh, 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 you know, a take and get relationship, but he is our dwelling place and that he gets to know the um, the futility of life, the brevity of life, and that he has to be accountable. And he also gets to see uh, sin as sin rather than uh, uh, you know, underestimating its seriousness. And uh, go going forward, um, he, he talks about all of this. And in verse 11, this is the crux of this uh, uh, psalm. In verse 11, he says, um, if only we knew the power of your anger, your wrath is as great as the fear that is due unto you. Now we need to really understand that those who really genuinely rever the Lord, who have a reverential fear towards the Lord, they only recognize, they only can really see God's wrath against sin in all its inten intensity. If we are, if we don't have a right reverential fear to the Lord, then we will not have a fear for sin and its consequences. So both of these are proportional to each other. The more you fear God, the more you will you will see um, the the hugeness or the uh, magnitude and the intensity of God's wrath upon sin. And finally, with all of this, he says in verse twelve, this is the this is the prayer that he, that everybody needs to pray. And he says, Lord. Teach us to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom. Only when we see that our death is approaching, only when we see that we are temporary creatures, we will really incline our hearts to um, uh, wisdom or towards the Lord. And what is this wisdom? This wisdom, as the Bible very clearly says in Proverbs chapter 9 and verse 10, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and the knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. So uh, when we get to see our death, then this is that wisdom. That is, you start to fear the Lord and you will not boast in futile things. Jeremiah chapter 9 verse 23 and 24 says, uh, you know, this is what the Lord says, let not the wise boast about his wisdom or the strong boast about his strength or the rich boast about his riches. But he who boasts, boasts about this, that they have understanding to know me, that I am the Lord who exercises kindness and justice and righteousness on earth. For in this I delight, declares the Lord. So our boasting should always be in the Lord. When we know that we are temporary creatures, when we know that we have an end, when we know that we are not sovereign, when we know that we are weak, then definitely, definitely, we will start to see God as God and we will start to have uh, a, a reverential fear towards God. So this is this is the psalmist uh, praying. Moses is praying, Lord, teach me to number my days so that I will fear you. I will come close to you. I will live in your reverential fear. And finally, he winds all of this in verse 17 and he says, may the favor of the Lord rest on us, establish the work of uh, our hands for us. Yes, establish the work of our hands. Or in other words, he knows that his work is temporary, but he says, Lord, establish so that my temporary work can have an eternal consequence in the kingdom of God. It is very true. Our works are temporary. We are temporary. But when we live as right and, uh, um, you know, faithful stewards of what the Lord has given us, though our work is temporary and our being is temporary, yet the work that we do will have an eternal consequence in the kingdom of God. Gracious Heavenly Father, help us to be able to look at you as Moses looked at you, O Lord, with reverential fear, knowing the intensity of sin and hating sin and, uh, O Lord, having an aversion towards sin. O Lord, help us to be filled with this kind of reverential fear for you and help us to always understand that we stand only by your grace and that you are our dwelling place. Help us to always rejoice in that intimate relationship with you. Jesus' wonderful, precious name we pray. Amen. Thank you.